Does anyone uh, remember the whole uh, incel meme? It, it's four o'clock. Can you not run in your wheel, you fat ass? Thank you. Fucking hamsters, man. Does anyone remember the incel meme? The, the, the great thing that uh, R9K is notorious for? Well, now, now there's a, a female equivalent. Um, the, the whole... I, I, I just heard about this recently. I was uh, browsing the internet, and I don't know what fucking article I came across, but I came across an article, and it was about female incels. And uh, let's just say the incels are not too happy about uh, females having the possibility of being incels, but... They, they got in this huge fucking argument over females uh, because they can get laid, they're not in celibate, and blah blah blah, and then they, you know... <sighs> it hurts me. It, it really does hurt me to make videos because I know they have to reach a very wide audience, but at the same time, I have to dumb down my content. I have to pull up the dictionary definition, and then I have to fucking spoon-feed you my opinions to make sure you're in on the loop. When you could just Google Femcell and get everything you need, you know, and then we can come here and we can fucking talk about it. Now I have to make it for the widest audience humanly possible, which means I have to treat my audience like they're retarded. And frankly, I don't like thinking that my audience is retarded. I believe that you're capable of human thought. And you're, you're, you're at least, at the very least, capable of understanding how to use Google. I don't need to pull up a dictionary definition for you, and I'm sick and tired of YouTubers doing it. Make sure you like and subscribe, hit that motherfucking bell like my dad fucking hits me on a daily fucking basis! I'm sorry, I'm just going on a fucking tangent again. Anyway, but the whole fucking femcel thing is a very fucking scary thought. Let's, let's be real, the whole incel thing, it... Human biology dictates in any society besides a completely monogamous one with you know, having large swaths of the male population being killed off due to war, making women's choices a little bit thinner, you know, being gatekeepers to society and all, blah blah blah, human evolution, blah blah blah, so gender dynamics, you're not retarded if you're watching this video, I would already assume that you're somewhat on the, uh, this hurts me to say, red pill side of things. <coughs> oh shit. Why do my lungs hurt all of a sudden? I feel like I have fucking... Oh, lung cancer. Oh. But but the at the very least, I'm, I'm going into this assuming that you're not... retarded. And you somewhat know why this is such a scary thought. And what the way gender dynamics truly work in the real world. You know, natural selection, mate selection, and all that other shit. If not, then go watch an Aiden Pal Paladin video. That'll take an hour, but you'll somewhat get where I'm coming from. I'd fuck the shit out of that Mississippi inbred. Just, oh god, moving on. But let's let's be real, this is a really legitimately scary thought. And and yeah, most people would quick would really, really quickly point to the fact that they're just horrible SJWs and feminists, and they probably have accused a couple of them of rape. And that's why no one wants to marry them, because... Let, let's be real, no one wants to fucking marry Anita Sarkeesian. They don't want to marry that person. They don't want to marry a woman who's just going to be toxic to them. Probably no one wants to fuck that kind of woman anyway. Like, no one, no one likes toxic people. You can be an asshole. There, there are some prerequisites to doing that. I don't know, I'm, I'm an asshole, but I just don't give a shit. Like, I, I have a sense of humor. I laugh about it. I, I, I understand that I'm an asshole. I get it. You know, I have a laugh about it and get the fuck over it. But I, I'm walking a fine line here, gentlemen. But then reality is, like, this is a scary thought. Because if women are just <laughs> giving up and... Maybe we don't need these women to breed. Holy fuck, that's dark. Holy shit. No, but like, it, this is a legitimately scary thought. And I know there are a lot of younger women out there who probably are buying into it. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if there are young women buying into this bullshit. All right, you're not a femme cell, okay? Here's, here's something that maybe your parents never told you. And I said the same shit to the MGTOWs. I said the same shit to the incels. 
Maybe you're a shitty person and you should fix that. Maybe there's something wrong with you. I, don't look at me. Don't look at me, dude. Like, I'm, I was the one who was in the MGTOW community screaming that I don't know why women want to fuck me and I hate women. Women are gay. Then I realized maybe I'm just an uninteresting cunt. You know? Maybe, maybe my uh, tendency to, to meet shitty people and end up dating them is just because, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I was a loser. Maybe I didn't have a job. Because I didn't want to work in fucking retail. I didn't like this. I don't like the service industry. But I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to improve myself. I didn't want to change my life and make myself more interesting and fun. I, I didn't know how to fu have fun. Let alone have the ability to enjoy my life. And no wonder. No wonder I was a bitter asshole. You know, me. I was the problem. I... I can literally give you the easiest way to find a man that'll marry you. Women. If you're gonna if you're gonna fall for this this shit, start improving your life. Number one, go to college, don't take a fucking bullshit degree. Gentlemen, same thing goes for you. Go to college, don't take a bullshit degree. Go into IT. Go to a community college. And then find yourself someone who has a future and cling to them onto dear life. Just make sure they aren't a fucking shithead. Like it, this, this is what my sister did, and I've always despised the ability for women to just not do anything but sit there and look pretty. I wish I was pretty, but this is this is a problem. What your parents never told you is that you're a fucking dick. No wonder no one wants to marry you. No wonder your relationships don't work out. Maybe there's a shortcoming in your dating life that you need to take care of. That's always a possibility, ladies and gentlemen. So stop bitching on the internet that you can't find a husband and you're 35 and you have no and you have, you know, you have cats. And stop telling other women just to give up and take the black pill. Take the red pill, my guy. Take 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 the red pill and just want to fucking kill yourself. Don't don't try to improve your life. What's that for? What? You like working at McDick's for seven twenty-five an hour? I, I bet you do, because you can live with your parents till you're fucking 30, you fucking loser. Or you can get up off your ass, bite your fucking tongue, and just do what you're supposed to do to improve yourself. Okay, so a lot of women have this problem nowadays. They're fat. A lot of dudes out there are fat, okay? How'd you get fat? This is a legitimate, this is a legitimate question. I'm not trying to be a sexist asshole. Can you cook? Most people really don't give a shit and are willing to overlook certain personality or certain imperfections. If your uh, personality and your uh, ability to, to provide or help someone, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're overweight because you like food. That happens. Do you eat a McDick's or do you cook something good? Legit question. All right, there are guys out there. Me. Or who will are or, or, or more than willing to fucking overlook the fact that you're overweight just because you can cook. Because cooking is such a fucking rarity these goddamn days. Le legit legitimately, in my dating life, if you cannot fucking cook, this is a standard that I've held myself to. If you cannot fucking cook, I'm not into it. If we, if the only thing we do is go out and eat make dicks and don't hit the fucking gym, then I'm sorry. I'm not into it. Sorry, that's not, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna, no, it's not gonna happen. That's it, that's, that's in, that's, that's standards, gentlemen. Ladies. Yeah, some guys, ew, land whale. Okay. Legitimate thing. If you want to fuck those guys, then go to the gym. And I think 90% of those guys, ew, land will, don't go to the gym. Either that or they're too doped up on steroids to give a shit. I mean, I'm just some scrawny IT nerd. Take, take my advice. Take my advice, he said. Everything would be fine, he said. Just, let's just be real with yourself. Okay? Go out and improve yourself. Find out your shortcomings in life, and then work towards fixing them. Like, if you're an asshole, 
or you don't have very many friends and you wonder why but you're always a dick to people and you don't understand why they don't want to talk to you like develop as a human being grow up grow a pair of balls if you want that guy that guy that just just seems to be out of your reach and untouchable and won't notice me senpai then fucking talk to him Oh, but it, it goes against every female nature to ask a nigga out. Well, ask the nigga out. Stop being a fucking faggot. I don't understand. I just don't understand, man. Just all, Literally all women have to do to get married is go to college, a four-year four university, take an easy remedial course, find a guy who's in chemical engineering, or as a software engineer, don't be a toxic cunt to him, and just just marry a nerd. That's really all you gotta fucking do. If you want to be provided for. Oh, but think about it. What he he doesn't fuck me like any like fucking Chad does. Okay, that's a legitimate thing. And honestly, I don't know how to help you. Get get a vibrator. Get a I, I don't know. Like fig figure the shit out. You should as a as an adult couple, you should you should be able to go to your fucking spouse and say. I want you to fuck the shit out of me. Oh, okay. Is usually the response. And, uh, yeah, that, you know, niggas, like, eat the pussy, bro. Like, eat the pussy. At that point, if you ain't eating the pussy, you better start eating the pussy. Eat some ass, bro. You better eat some ass. Because, let's be fucking real. Nigga, your marriage is dead. You better start eating some ass, bro. But I really, I don't have sympathy for you. If you're gonna be a shithead and bitch on the internet, why don't you get off the internet? Go to a bowling alley. Go to a bar. Get drunk. Have fun. Enjoy your life. The chances are you're 20. If you're really in the incel slash femcel stage, go to a fucking bar. Oh, but I don't have any friends. Go make some. I don't know how. Sucks to be you. Sucks to suck, bruh. Get good, faggot. I've seen people, okay, I've seen people at the bar where they will sit there and they'll kind of keep to themselves, but you know they want to talk to someone, but they just, they just for some reason can't figure out how to talk to someone. Because there's like this mind, there's this huge fucking chess game going on in their head. I used to be one of those fucking autists. Then I realized that everyone doesn't give a shit. Just, just walk up to them and say, hey, how's your day been? What you doing? Mind if I join you? And if they're a dick, you're at a bar. <laughs> like, hey, let me buy a drink. You wanna play some darts? You wanna play some pool? I got I got five on the table, my guy. Jesus Christ. It's not fucking hard. Hey man, you I don't I see you got there a, a marble light. I was wondering if I could try one. Can I bum a square? Like stop being like there's a stage where you have to stop being an angsty teenager. You should not be an angsty teenager in your early 20s. You should be at bars having fun enjoying your fucking 20s. Because chances are, your 20s are gonna fly by. Go, go do something with your life. Oh, well, uh, bars aren't just, they just aren't for me. Have you tried a club? I don't like loud clubs because it's hard to talk to people. Then learn how to dance. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to dance. Take dancing lessons. I don't have any money. Get a fucking job. I can't get there. Get a fucking job. Figure it out. Go buy a cheap car off a of Craigslist. Drive it to work for fucking four days. Like, I don't, I don't get, I don't get this shit. Like, a lot of people struggle in life. I understand. And a lot of these, I guarantee you a lot of these incels slash femcels didn't have parents. That's another thing that I've noticed in a increasing frequency of people who struggle with mental health or are on the internet 24/7. It's they didn't have parents who fucking raised them. But hey, let's let's be real. They did have parents, but those parents would rather bitch and whine and complain to the government how the government should be their fucking should take their place as parents. You can't curse. Cursing is bad. I don't want my children to hear it. Why 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 are your children hanging out with people who curse? Oh, well, they're, they're... Reeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
would you stop being a fucking helicopter parent? Yeah, just just smack the shit out of your kid if he curses at you. For by all fucking means, pop him upside the head. And if he doesn't learn, maybe you should have been a better parent. I don't I don't care. Like leave me the fuck. I'm I'm gonna say fuck. I'm gonna say shit. Ass, tits, cummed, nutted, whatever the fuck I want to say on the internet. Get your kid off the fucking internet. Well, I'm not gonna go into your house. Open your fucking door, call you a fat faggot and a cunt, and then just oh, leave. Won't someone think of the children? Censor the internet. Ah. Ah. Censor the internet. Don't let people have fun because my kids are on the internet. I work two full time jobs. Epic dicks, and I don't understand. I don't have time for my children. Maybe you shouldn't have fucking kids. Yeah, I said it. Fuck yourself. Oh, I don't understand. Why? Why won't the world raise my children for me? I just don't have the time. I'm perpetually broke. Because I'm always at work. I never found a man. Because I'm a crazy bitch. And I like my checks from the government because it's easy. <coughs> my aunt. No wonder. No wonder. We don't need people like you to breed. There's birth control. You should use it until you go through menopause and die. There's also a male birth control pill. We would like you to also take it if you park like a fucking dick in the parking lot. And, and you know what? I'm perfectly okay for those people who park like total assholes taking up both spaces in the parking lot because they have a nice car that they spend a lot of money on. I, I would rather you not breed. In fact, I don't care if my tax dollars pay for you and your wife to become sterilized at this point. Because fuck you, we don't need any more of you. I went on a tangent. We do have a lack of parents. And I guarantee you, 90% of these people that you find bitching on the internet that they don't have a man or they can't find a woman or they just can't function in real life society just didn't have parents. Go look at R9K. Those are the children of people who didn't raise their kids. And in fact, here's a really good way not to become a bitter feminist with 4,000 STDs and 67 dead cats living under her fat ass. Did, did you have a good relationship with your parents? I'm, I'm not looking to smash. I would actually like to know about your parents. How's your father doing? Have you talked to him? Do you, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you bring it up in casual conversation to find out if they're fucking batshit or not? You know? Like, if you're serious about someone, if you really want them to be a part of your life, if you found someone that you are interested in, ask them, Hey, so what does your mother do for a living? And if she says unemployed, um, crazy, or anything negative, in the sense that it's more overwhelmingly negative and they don't, you know, you know, they don't have a functioning relationship with their parents. Chances are their parents weren't parents and they're crazy run. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. If the mom's a fat crazy bitch, then chances are she'll be a fat crazy bitch. If his mom's a fat crazy bitch who isn't controlling and has his fucking balls in her purse like a fucking Puerto Rican woman, then yeah, chances are you'll be able to pussy whip that nigga and chances are he'll come back after you break up with his ass because you got bored of his ass because you had his balls in your fucking purse he's probably gonna kill you <laughs> he's probably gonna beat the ever-loving shit out of you what a shock like that's something you always got to ask when you start dating and not a lot of people know that conclusion time ladies and gentlemen if you're having problems with dating, if you're having problems with life, if you've kind of noticed your mom's a little bit crazy and she didn't really know how to raise boys or your dad was never around and it really, really, really hurts you inside that you never had a male role model. Dis dysfunctional parents, a lot of dysfunctional parents these days that your parents expect you to just go out in life and do shit when in reality, you're struggling to tread water on your own. You can't even step outside of your, out of your parents' house because they didn't give you legs to fucking stand on. And you wonder why you get into relationships with crazy women because you've never really seen how a functioning relationship works. Or you always date guys who 
put up this veil, this act of, I want to be there forever, and then after the first date, you never hear back from them? Have you ever heard of that shit? Maybe that's your problem. Now what are you going to do about it? Right, bitch and cry on the internet. I think when you grow up with dysfunctional parents or in a dysfunctional environment, you basically are shipwrecked out at sea and you don't know how to swim. You don't know how to fend for yourself. You don't know how to, to create and sustain healthy relationships. You don't know the basics about how to plan a, a career, get your education, save money, uh, self-organize, uh, feed yourself well, uh, how to get exercise, how to uh, you know, uh, organize your life fundamentally how to set boundaries with people in relationships how to avoid bad people how to embrace good people and how to have a um, how to plan a career uh, you know how to defer gratification so I think what happens is the ship of childhood goes down you know the whole point of, of I think parenting in in the long run is to teach your kids how to swim when the ship of childhood goes down because it's gonna go down and then they're going to have to swim to whatever beautiful island they want to spend their adult life on. And so, if you can't swim when the ship goes down, and there's lots of stuff floating in the water, what do you do? What you do is you grab whatever floats, right? Because you can't swim. It literally is sink or swim. And to me, codependency is, I can't swim. My ship of childhood has gone down. And I have to grab whatever floats because I don't know how to swim. And if you don't know how to swim, you can't swim anywhere. You can't go in any particular direction. If all you can do is hang on to some big ass barrel that's floating in the water, where do you go? Well, you float wherever the hell that barrel goes and I guess afterwards you call it a plan. And so for me, codependency simply means I don't know how to live. And so I need to cling to someone to avoid the horrible knowledge that I don't know how to live and what that means about my upbringing and my history and, and sadly my future, right? Because until we learn how to do that, we're just going to have to cling to people not out of love, but out of a desperate desire to avoid drowning and even worse, to avoid the knowledge that we spent 18 years on a ship and nobody ever taught us how to swim when they knew that ship was going down. And so to me, the, the way to deal with codependency is to learn how to swim. It's very painful for us to realize how little we have been prepared by dysfunctional parents for an independent, productive and happy adulthood. You understand? It's really painful. Because basically the way it looks, the way it looked like to me, and I know this wasn't the case, but the way it looked like to me was, you know, the ship was going down and everybody was eager to jump into the water and start swimming to their fabulous exotic islands to live out their wonderful lives. They were all like, hey, I can't wait. I got my swimsuit on. I'm limbered up. I covered up and down with duck butter and I'm good to go. Whereas I was like, oh shit, I'm not ready. I don't, I don't know how to swim. And it was weird because I, I didn't know how to swim. Ship was going down and nobody else seemed to care that I didn't know how to swim. And so me, a couple other people who didn't know how to swim at these terrible childhoods, we just hung on to these barrels, these logs, treading water, hoping there weren't sharks. Not just, I don't know where the hell to go. I guess the current's going this way, so I'm going this way. And what was so painful to me was seeing all the other people swimming off to their islands with, with, with firm, confident, happy strokes because they knew how to swim and they knew what they wanted. I didn't know how to swim. I didn't know what I wanted. And so it's very painful to compare ourselves to functional people and realize the horrifying deficiencies that we've been left with. But I think that's why dysfunctional people avoid functional people, because it's just so painful to realize the deficiencies in our, in our upbringing.